Hi, I'm James. Let's take a look at how to use the Files Pro plugin from Zero Code. Just before we jump into it, if you need any help building your app or product, feel free to reach out to our team by visiting our website at zerocode.com. We're the largest maker of plugins for Bubble, as well as the top gold tier Bubble agency. We have almost 10 years of experience and can help you build any web, mobile, or AI product, or even help automate your business. While you're there, make sure you check out zerocode.com slash plugins. This is the full list of all the plugins we make, and there's like over 700 of them. So there's something there to cover pretty much everything your app could possibly need to do. Uh, for example, you know, there's uh, Stripe Marketplace Express. This helps you accept credit card payments on your app. Uh, there's Mapbox Maps, and this gives all sorts of maps functionality. Uh, this one's really good for saving on Bubble's hosting costs. This is AWS File Uploader, so you can store your files on your own S3 bucket. Uh, there's Air Calendar, there's Air Chat and Messaging. There's so many more there, so definitely explore that and check that out. Okay, let's take a look at the plugin itself. So Files Pro is an upgraded file uploader, image uploader for your Bubble app. And it allows you to do a lot more than the standard Bubble uploader. Uh, as we see here on the plugin page, we can do live preview uh, with image and file size limits with uploading, uploading multiple files, different file types, and leaking directly with uh, file hosting platforms like Upload Care, File Stack, Azure, uh, or directly to your Bubble uh, storage itself. Now on the plugin page here, there are a few things that are super important for you to check out. So the first is the live demo link here. This will open up a pre-made Bubble app with the plugin already installed. Uh, so you can experience it from a user's point of view and see how it feels to use and its capability and what it's like to actually, you know, use the, use the plugin once it's installed. So we can see here we have multiple, uh, let's just close that. We have multiple uh, different uh, file hosting services all linked in. Um, all integrated with the plugin, we can see how they behave and work. Uh, similarly, if we go back to the plugin page, we have the demo editor button. Now this will open up the exact same app that we just saw, uh, but from the bubble editor's point of view. So we can now go in and see how this is all put together. What are the options? What are all the parameters we can control? Uh, what are the workflows that make this happen? How is it all put together? You can kind of pull it apart before installing to see if it uh, does what you need it to do. Now, super important, there's also the documentation link here. Now, this will open up the full docs for the plugin, goes through everything from the um, prerequisites and requirements you need to set up before you install a plugin, how to install it, um, different in set of instructions depending on which service you're going with, as well as all the uh, different states, the different workflows, the different actions, uh, and some example workflows to get you started. Uh, everything you need to get this up and running. Uh, and more advanced uses is here in the docs. Uh, but we'll go through something, uh, we'll go through setting up something basic together just to get the ball rolling and get you started. The last thing I want to mention on this plugin page is our intercom chat bubble down the bottom right here. If you have any questions about this plugin while you're installing, before installing, wondering what it can do, how to make it work within your app, send us a message here. We would love to help you out. We'll be able to answer you there and uh, get you on the right track. All right, let's put something basic together and get this set up. Okay, before we can do anything, we need to get this plugin into your app. So the first thing we're going to do from the uh, bubble editor here is on the left-hand side, I'm going to click on the plugins tab. And then in the top right, click on add plugins. And in the search field, search for files pro. And there we go. This is the one here. Files pro multi-file uploader by zero code. Now you've got two options for adding this plugin to your app. You've got a once-off purchase, or you can pay monthly with a subscription. Now the subscription is the most risk-free way to try this out as you're charged on a pro rata basis. So you're only charged for the days that you actually have the plugin installed in your app. So if the plugin here is $4 a month, you install the plugin, you try it out for a day or so, you work out it's not quite right, and then you remove it, you're only charged for that one day. So $4 divided by 30 days in a month. So it's really risk-free, really cheap to try this out. Uh, and uh, yeah, whichever way you go here, whether you do the once off or the, um, the subscription, install the plugin, you'll have it in your app. Uh, and let's, um, let's see what is available to us workflow wise and element wise and get this up and running. Okay, once we've the plugin installed, let's look at how to put it all together and actually get this, uh, this, this working for us. So I'm gonna jump over to the docs. We can see here under prerequisites, we need to have an account with either Upload Care, File Stack, DigitalOcean or Azure. Uh, to be the destination that we're uploading all of our files to. For this uh, tutorial, I'm going to use Upload Care, um, but whichever one best suits your needs and uh, what you're building, sign up for that there, and uh, the process will be outlined here directly in the, um, in the docs. So make sure you check that out. But for now, I'm going to go to UploadCare.com. Now, I've already created an account here, but once you sign up for a free account, you have a 14-day free trial, and you'll be taken to your dashboard, which looks like this you will automatically be um, 
the Upload Care will automatically create a project for you. I'll just call it new project. You can rename this the, the name of your application or anything you like. But once you flick into that new project, you'll see all the information you need here. These are all my test images I've been uploading, and you'll have some example images in there already once your account, uh, once your project is started. What we need to do here though, and you can see here on the bottom left, you've got a, a free trial to trial this out. So you've got all this test before you uh, move it into a, a production uh, environment before paying. So what we need from this screen here is on the left-hand side, we'll see API keys. Click on that, and we will copy our public key. If we jump back to Bubble now and go over to our Plugins tab and select our, where are we? Do, 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 Files Pro. Uh, and then scroll down. We can put that here in the field in settings for upload care for our dev version or our live version. Now, as I mentioned, this process will be slightly different depending on what uh, file uh, hosting service you choose. So make sure you do reference the docs um, if you're using something different, for example, file stack or DigitalOcean. Uh, as where you put those keys will be slightly different. You can see here it's actually in the element itself for Azure. So check that depending on how you uh, do set things up. But once you have the keys in there, that's all you need to do to connect to the service and we can jump back into Bubble. Okay, we're in our editor here. So on the left-hand side in the assets panel, if you search for uploader, you'll see this element here, uploader. This is new in your elements once you have the plugin installed and it's the actual uploader we're going to be using within uh, with, with this plugin. So I'll drag this onto my canvas. And we can see, well, I already have one on there, but let's have a look at this new one. We can see everything we can play with on the right-hand side here in our um, properties panel. So let's have a quick look through. We'll go through the basics here, but there's a lot we can customize to make this feel completely native to your app. Um, so to start with, we've got a maximum file size limit here, so you can control how big the files that are being uploaded are so that you don't get overwhelmed by some users that might be uploading terabytes. Uh, you need to turn on file uploads enabled to yes. Uh, and then you can choose where your files are being stored. So in my case, it's upload care. But depending on what you do choose, these fields here will be important depending if you have Azure, DigitalOcean, File Stack, et cetera, et cetera. Have a, have a look in the documentation uh, for your relevant uh, instructions for these fields depending on your uh, provider. All right, let's scroll down a bit. So we have a bunch of different properties you can play with. Um, we can, or well, we have image preview turned on, uh, we can allow crop, we can allow removing and resizing and all these different things to, to customize the actual upload flow. You can control the quality, you control the maximum amount of files, um, as well as minimum and maximum width of actual images if, if you are uploading images here. So these are all your parameters for controlling the actual process of uploading and what is and isn't allowed and, and what form that takes. Underneath that, we start to have some more front-end design adjustments. So uh, for example, the text that shows here. So if I change this to test, that'll change uh, this text here in the preview of the app itself, not necessarily in the editor. Uh, we then have a whole bunch of, uh, we can change the color of the actual upload text. This is where you change the labels for different actions within the uploading process. For example, if you know, you've reached the maximum file size, if it's an invalid file type, you can customize all of this. And you've got more customization options here as well for defining different labels. Underneath all that, we have all of our colors. So uh, the actual padding for the files, what the color of the success um, background is, what color the error background is, all the preview image sizes, everything you need to make this look and feel perfect to your app and completely native to your app. Let's see what these look like in action though. It's a bit hard to understand what they all mean until we actually see the app itself. So I'm going to delete this one here because we already have one on our, uh, an uploader on our canvas here. But then I'll press preview and we'll see what we end up with. Okay, here we are, very bare bones. I haven't really changed any defaults, so we have everything looking default. We have our default text, we have no styling, but of course you can go in and style this and match it to the, the visuals of your app to make it fit in and, and feel very native. But for now, I'm just going to drop in an image I have here from Unsplash. So we can start to see how this looks and behaves. Alrighty, looking good. We have an image preview. As we saw, we'd enable the image previews in our properties panel in the previous step. We'd also enable being able to remove the file, which is what this button does here. So clicking that, we'll reset the uploader. Let's bring that back in. All right, cool. And if I click upload here, this will connect with upload care through the API key that we'd already put in. Start uploading, we can see a progress here. And um, we can also click to cancel if you want to as well. Now, while that's uploading very quickly, we can have a look here as well. We can see in our properties panel here, if we enable cropping or resizing, we can then specify what size uh, the image is as it gets uploaded. We can resize it to 100 pixels by 100 pixels or whatever size that we need to. 
Um, but for now we're uploading at full size, uh, cause I didn't really enable any of that yet. All right, here we go. Uploading. There we go. Upload complete. So we have a nice tick. We have a nice green stage here. And as we saw in our properties panel, we can customize uh, that upload success green to whatever color we'd like here as well. Let's jump over to upload care and check that it's, uh, it's arrived safely. Okay, here we are in our new project that upload care has made for us. I will refresh the page and here we go. Here is our image we just uploaded and we should be able to preview it here. There we go, full size, so big. <laughs> it takes a bit to download on my internet, um, but we can also as I said, resize it if that is too large to, um, to be storing for what you're wanting to do. Cool. Let's jump back over to Bubble and have a look at a few other things. All right. That worked nicely. Let's just refresh as well and try something else. So if I upload that same image, or I drop that same image we just uploaded, then I drop a second image here. You can see that we can now upload multiple files at once uh, and uh, without having to individually do them one by one. Let's see how to make that happen smoothly though. So as you can see, we have individual upload buttons for these, but I've also got an upload button down the bottom here. We haven't looked at that yet. Let's see what's happening there. I'm gonna jump back to my bubble editor and we can start to look at some workflows that work with this plugin. So I'm gonna to jump to our workflow tab on the left and I've got two workflows set up here to show you. The first is when that button is clicked, that upload button, um, which we saw just here, yeah, upload. So if I click edit workflow, it's this one here, button upload is clicked. There's only one thing here, very simple, start uploading the uploader A. I only have uploader A on my canvas. If we had multiple uploaders, we could name them and specify them here. But this button will just start uploading everything in that uploader. So in our case, because we have two images here in our uploader, clicking this button will upload both of them at the same time without me having to individually click upload for the I have a second action, a second workflow here, and it's triggered by when the uploader's already uploaded, when the files in the uploader have been uploaded. Lots of upload in that sentence. So when uploader A's all files have been uploaded, we want to create a new file in our bubble database, because that's kind of the second part of this, right? We can upload to Upload Care or Azure or whatever we're using for our file storage. But then we want to have them in our, if we want to have them in our bubble uh, database as well, how do we link to them? How do we bring them down? Uh, or how do we create a version of them in our bubble app? And that's what this is doing here. So what I've said to do is when uh, upload is clicked, start uploading. When uploading is finished, create something new in our bubble database. So I've got it called create a new files pro file. Let's jump over to our database to see what's going on there. If I go to data types, I can see I have made a data type here called files pro file. Now for our demo, I'm, we're just using images in this uh, mini app. So all I've done is made an image field, but if you're wanting to reference other files, you can put in a text field and reference the exact URL of every single file as it's stored in your file storage uh, provider, um, depending on how your app is set up. So have a look at the documentation for more advanced implementation of that as well. But for our use case, I'm just going to keep the image there because that's, uh, that's all we need for our, our very simple app to get you started. So we have a data type called files profile. We have a field uh, image with a type of image. It makes sense. Uh, so that means in our workflow, once the uploader has finished uploading, we want to create a new um, entry to this, to this database. So we have create a new type files profile and the image is the uploader A's file. So the file that we just uploaded in upload A also added to our bubble um, database. Now, if you're wanting to be saving space in your bubble database and not store the actual file itself in there, uh, that's where you would reference the actual URL and link it to um, the, uh, the URL of the file being hosted elsewhere. Um, again, docs will be your best friend there. But for now, we're just saving the image there. There's one other step I want to add to this workflow. So if we go to plugins, is it plugins or element actions? Element actions. We then want to reset the file uploader because otherwise we're kind of stuck on that success state. Um, and we want to set it fresh if we want to upload more files. So let's see what this looks like now. I'm going to hit preview. I'm going to drop in uh, that same unsplash image. And now I'm going to click upload. So this should upload the file. And then triggered by the file being uploaded, we should reset um, the, uh, the state of the uploader. And it should save it to our bubble database. A couple of things happening at once. Let's try it out.
So we can see uploading has started. My internet is not very fast here, so I'm going to skip ahead towards uploaded. All right, we're almost there, 95. So this should reset as soon as it's done. There we go, it's uploaded. Our upload is completely reset and we're ready to upload again. Now I'd say when Googling this, you should probably add a little bit, uh, improve the UX around the upload state a little bit. So this could be something like showing a pop-up that says your upload uh, is now complete and then having that auto dismiss after a few seconds or turning your upload button green and saying upload complete or done, something like that. Uh, and that can be done very easily through conditions and, uh, and, and your workflow actions. So what that could look like here in our editor is uh, on our button, for example, when upload A's, all files are uploaded, change the label to done. Uh, or it could be in our workflows uh, with a trigger being like we saw here, when the upload of all files are uploaded, show something or, or trigger something, trigger a pop-up, um, put confetti over the screen or something. Lots of options there to really have this plugin hook into lots of different parts of your app so that it is a completely seamless experience for your users and, and feels really native and polished. Now, one last thing, let's check that actually uploaded because uh, now we're using the button, of course, rather than um, the actual, the upload button that was on our thumbnail. So I'll refresh upload care. Uh, and there we go, there's our top one there. There's the image we just uploaded. Click on that to preview. Lovely, full size, everything there. Now, what we haven't checked is, did this actually add to our bubble database uh, after our workflow? So let's go and look at the database. I'm going to click on app data and then in files profiles, here we go. Here is the image we just added. So if I click C, we should see, there we go. There's our image. Uh, it's added it from upload care straight down to our bubble app itself uh, and stored it in our database. Everything working nicely. Now, there's a lot more you can do with this plugin. Um, as we saw in our properties panel here, you can uh, enable resizing, cropping, optimizing images as they're uploaded. Um, you can uh, instant upload, so you don't necessarily need to build an upload button if you, if you want people just to immediately start uploading when files, are up, when files are added to the uploader. So definitely do have a look through the documentation for more advanced versions of this, more advanced implementations of this uh, to make sure it works for your specific app and your specific use case as well as the demo app, uh, both the, the front end of it and the bubble app itself uh, that you can reverse engineer and see uh, how this is all put together for more advanced ways to use this. Uh, but for now, for our video, this will be enough to get you started, get the ball rolling. We have our element on our canvas. We've changed and, and adjusted some parameters and seeing what we can change. And we've built in some simple workflows for triggering an upload and then showing some uh, results after an upload is complete. And that's about it for this video. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions about this plugin, installing its capabilities, how you can use it, don't hesitate to reach out and send us a message. We would love to help out. And until then, happy building.